Welcome everybody to the Peasants Podcast. Get comfortable as we sit by the fire and chat everything Daisy. We will be joined by our podcast team, TikTok creator Smiley's Got a Gun and long-term player ADKQ. Our chat moderator Queen Peasant. Don't forget the people in chat and those in the comments section, drop your thoughts and your opinions on our subjects. We also maybe have a few special guests in our group chat. We'd like to welcome you all to the Peasants Podcast. As I said, we have an absolutely lovely guest. He's an a Xbox Day Z streamer, uh, Mr. Burnt Biscuit. I've known him for quite a while. Uh, we wanted to get him on the show, have a little chat to him. He's very, very chill. Uh, of course, we want to touch base on some of the events that are carrying on with Day Z. Um, as they slowly but surely change the, the obviously the way the, the show rolls out. So I want to sit down and talk about that. And of course, we'll have the business from the panel. And have, the conversation will of course stray to wherever it needs to go. So, further ado, I'd like to welcome you all to the Peasants Podcast. Let's get on the way. You sound like a very happy little soul. I can hear it in your voice. Yep, we call them happy little Vegemites. Yeah. <laughs> I think the way it Got goes is, you know, cheek. for sure. I think if somebody goes through enough things, they either come out the other side as either a villain or like just you know like it makes them it molds somebody into a stronger better character so i'm i'm happy for that honestly that you know i turned out the way i did i'm glad you took the ladder yes i'm all for people who take on like the self-improvement rather than yeah that it go the dark side so yeah, that's good uh, so that's it the dark side is a very very nasty place to be and a hard place to get out of very. indeed yep and i and I was, I've been there, but, you know, ultimately came out of it. So that's for the best, you know. A hundred percent. Yeah. And in life, we've all got to, um, I suppose, improve on ourselves and keep evolving. That's the key. hundred percent. hundred percent. Life lessons and all that. Life lessons and all that. Sometimes you've got to go the hard road. <laughs> I know I've been on the fucking <laughs> yeah. hard road many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same here, brother. Yeah. It's part of the process, man. Uh, I think so. Yeah, it certainly is. You can't, well, you can't grow without going through fucking bad shit. Yep. For sure, for sure. 100%. All right, well, first of all, let's uh, let's do some introductions. Uh, and, of course, uh, a good morning or good evening to all you guys on the panel and in the chat. Uh, on the panel, we have absolute legends. Absolute legends. Uh, starting on the right hand side, uh, looking medievalish and in her sportswear. Not sure what she's going to be today. Uh, Spy's got a gun. <laughs> welcome, welcome, bruv. Morning, morning, fam. Yep. Uh, I told you this is the best outfit in the game. Although uh, Biscuit here is looking quite dapper, so he might <laughs> yeah. actually take the lead in outfits today. <laughs> uh, I think so, especially. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> He's rocking the the gummies as well. So, <laughs> yeah, Smiley, help me out. <clears throat> oh yes. <laughs> now we understand why you you dress so uh, uh, with such class. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, on our left-hand side, our resident thug, uh, Mr. ADKQ. Good morning. Morning, morning. Um, and in the middle is our panel guest, uh, Mr. Burnt Biscuit. He's a Daisy console streamer on Twitch. Welcome to the podcast, bud. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. That's the way. That's the way. So um, we're going to dive into the show. We're going to find out a little bit more about Biscuit. Uh, to start off with, uh, and then we're going to venture on about um, a little bit about the seasons and the a few of the things that may not make a little sense, or um, how the game is going to formulate with the seasons of DayZ coming up in the new in, uh, update. Uh, so, 
Mr. Bird Biscuit been a, is a Twitch streamer or sorry, is a console streamer on Twitch. Uh, the question we always like to know is how did you end up in the world of DayZ? Yeah, so it all started probably about two and a half years ago at this point. My brother introduced me to the game. I'm pretty sure uh, back around the time that you first found my channel, you used to see me play with my brother a lot. Yep. And uh, I picked it up for the first time two and a half years ago, and I played for like two weeks. And I was like, man, this game is too fucking hard. I can't figure it out. I just can't get a grip of it, right? <laughs> As so we, I left as we the all game did. for like, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Common occurrence there. And so I left from the game for probably about like three months, and then my brother finally convinced me. He's like, "Come on, come back. Let me really show you the ways of Daisy this time. Once you get it down, you'll love it." And I was like, "All right, I'll give it one more shot." You know, because me and my brother go way back with gaming. He started me off with Halo and all that stuff. Still my favorite game to this day, and Daisy's my second. But um, so I came back and really got the hang of it that time and man it's stuck like glue ever since i don't play anything else i mean i occasionally might stream a little bit of halo or some apex or something like that but this is what i love man this game is where it's at for me that's that's where the f you finally got that addiction and <laughs> now you're stuck for yes. life certainly it, it'll be a uh a co-host on the podcast. Once it's got you, you can never leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, I heard. <laughs> never leave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah trap for life, people. Trap for it's life. Been... <laughs> it's been. <laughs> it's been forty. No, no, four hundred days. <laughs> since my months, three since, hours. Since <laughs> I last. Since I last oh, got God. freedom away from the podcast. Uh, we're nearly rolling up to, <laughs> I think we're on 90 shows or something like that. Are we? 90? Yeah, oh. nearly at the 100. But, um... Oh, no wonder I feel old. Can I... Awesome. You are, it's all right. Can I ask, is your brother still playing? Uh, me and him kind of fell out of touch, you know, for some personal reasons. A lot of yeah. stuff happened. That's why I was offline for the better part of a year. But uh, uh, he probably still plays on PC, if I had to assume. Ah, oh, fair enough. So he's disappeared to PC. It's just funny that we we always hear about the stories of people joining DayZ and they get roped in by a third party or, you know, your friends or your brother. Or, and then they leave and you stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, very ironic it, it happens all the time it's just it just seems that people rope somebody else in um to play the game and then they they don't they you know decide not to play anymore and here we are still cracking around mr josie garfunkel hello good sir um so what made you decide that it was time to stream DayZ? Were you streaming Halo before you started DayZ? Or did, was DayZ the inspiration for kicking off the Twitch career? Honestly, DayZ was definitely the inspiration. I'd say that's due to a big part of just the the diversity and you know daisy is ever changing it's they're always the devs are always doing something good in my opinion they're always upgrading um and just in general it's you know it's a very social game like sure you can be on certain servers or go days or you know you're meeting people that are kos etc but nonetheless i still have so many fun great interactions and i've met probably literally almost 70% of the people on my friends list are from Daisy. So with that being said, you know, it's just, yeah, I started playing Daisy, and I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about streaming for quite some time. Maybe go ahead and give it a shot, see how it works out. And I'd say, and especially with the help of you, Greedy, definitely, it's worked out quite well so far. Oh, well, that's, that's good to hear. That's what we like to hear about in the, in the community. Um... So when it comes to the actual DayZ realm, what servers do you like to play? Uh, and why do you enjoy those servers? So I'm mostly an official guy myself. Um, I usually play strictly official, probably like, you know, probably 80% of the time, just because uh, for me it's, you know, official's a little bit more difficult. Like, I know they have some community servers that are pretty hardcore, but it's that feeling, it's the adrenaline rush, right? 
it's the adrenaline rush you get whenever you've been playing on the same character for eight hours and maybe you've only seen one soul in three hours and then you go to Tissy, you go to Nadbor, wherever, right? And you get in that gunfight and your blood starts pumping. Whether you win or lose, it's just, you know, a very euphoric experience. But um yeah, I'm mostly an official guy, but I also do like to play a couple community servers. Um Karma Crew. I don't know if you guys know what Karma Crew is, but I like Karma Crew. I like both the Chinaris and Livonia server. Oh, yeah. How's the, um, <coughs> I haven't played it since it came out. Sorry, bruv, you go. No, I was just going to say, I still haven't played it yet. You haven't been on there? Yeah, neither. Yeah. Really? It's pretty oh, cool. I still haven't. I, no, I haven't. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to put it You're on. You're going to have to have a little dabble. Now, it's, it's not a bad server. Because it runs EU for me, it's, it's a little bit... It's got that jitter to it, you know. EU servers in Australians don't go down well. Um, it's a, it's quite a high <laughs> ping. It's about a three hundred ping for us. Um, right. Th they label it as hardcore, but I'd say it's more just a little bit harder than official. Um, very, Agreed. Yeah. Uh, very PvP based. Very inland PvP based. Um, so they've they've done a good job coming across from the PC realm. Um, their hype's died down quite a lot, um, but they still they still rock a full server. Oh, nice. Yep, they definitely do. Yeah, so Karma Crew, uh, Chinaris, and Livonia, get out there and check them out. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, like Reed just said, it is uh, very PvP-based. I've had definitely a smaller... Uh, amount of encounters with you know like friendly people or people who are willing to go on a little adventure as I would with official but it still happens and uh, I mean if you don't want to play official servers and you're looking for kind of the next thing it's not a bad option yeah 100% Mr. HXC's adventures oh, they removed the hardcore tag on Xbox ah oh, they took the hardcore tag off yeah because the hmm. hardcore on console I think is a little bit different to hardcore on PC <coughs> <laughs> I think we're a little bit more nuttery. <laughs> I think we're we like it a little bit harder <laughs> than they do, <laughs> or at least from yeah. their we name. Like to be punished. That's it. We really like to, you know, if we're not crying by the end of the session, then what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, hundred percent. No, but that's uh. That's good. Have you, have you found since the update has official <laughs> been less duper orientated? Oh boy! <laughs> so can I give you guys a little story here? This is what um, I like to hear. Hundred well, percent story time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So literally for about the past let's see, um, a couple months ago, I met a group of guys. Uh, was rolling with them. We got stream sniped by somebody who actually had really good <laughs> intentions. And I still play with them to this day. His name's Diddy. They got a huge squad. Great guys. But the guys I was rolling with, whenever that happened, I uh, rolled with them more than a few times. And just last week, I was playing with these guys. And uh, this guy comes up to me, and we're talking. And he's like, yeah, so, you know, uh, you always see how I got my full green kits, my full black kits and whatnot. He's like, yeah, I, I dupe. And I got kind of to asking him about it. And me, me personally, I don't agree with duping. I don't want to upset anybody. I think it's uh, kind of a, you know, a sickness on the game. That's just my personal opinion. But, um, so, yeah, those guys are dupers. And I figured that out last week. Haven't ran with them since just because it kind of upset me a little bit, you know, because I liked them. And then I found out, like, oh, that's why you guys have got NVGs every time I see you. <laughs> yeah, that's you, why. you guys have got an M4. <laughs> that's why you kitted out to the max. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> and so um, I, I actually contacted the devs on it. And I was like, yo, I found a duper ring. And they were like, um, they sent me back a message, Bohemian Interactive. And they said, so they've currently got another update in the works to, once again, hopefully, rid dupers for once and for all. But we'll see how that goes. I know it's a very difficult task for the developers to undertake. I know it's pretty complicated for them to actually get rid of it, you know, permanently. Yeah. yeah. Well, the problem is, is they'll just keep finding new ways to do it. You know, people there that have spent hours yeah. and hours just trying to find a way. 
Exactly, and that's what they were telling me. The guys in the party that I was talking to, uh, they were telling me they have a Discord channel, right, where it's like like 60 people or something like that in the Discord, and they're all dupers, and they're always working around the clock to find new ways to dupe, and I was just like, fuck, all right. <laughs> yeah, so that's a game to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. trying to work it out. That's a game exactly. in itself. And you also yeah. put a good point. It'd be like us when we like to sit down on editor. They get in, oh, what are we doing tonight? Oh, we're, we're going to crack this tube tonight. You know, imagine everyone cheering. Yay, we got it. Mm. Yay. So you can see where that, <clears throat> the camaraderie yeah. and we're going to get paid this season, which is the biggest, <laughs> which, which is the biggest thing, people selling kits and dupe methods and... Hey, yeah it is that's what they were talking to me about is he was telling me about a few guys who sell full kits it's like he said like 30 dollars per full kit 30 us dollars and i was like damn dude that, that's a <gasps> major hustle oh. <laughs> it's crazy yeah so how do you how do you do this i got bills to pay <laughs> <laughs> Look, I would love to be able to tell you, but he told me that they're very secretive and they gatekeep it pretty hard. Like, I didn't even ask him to join the server or anything like that. And, but, um, yeah, he was just telling me that they gatekeep it pretty hard and that they're selling the kits and whatnot, so I couldn't even tell you. And like I said, once they told me that, man, I just I haven't really talked to them since then because I, I like the guys and I figured that out and I was like, uh, kind of made my heart sink a little, you know? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's one of those fine lines. It's one of those fine lines. Like uh, I've been on that boat. I've been on that run. I know how easy it is to get ten of your mates together, drop a couple of kits, and have the ultimate four hours of your the night. There's no looting up. There's no. There's nothing but just murder and laughing. So similar to ten x loot. <clears throat> that's that's just the community version of duping. Um, <laughs> that's a fun server. Yeah, yeah but but, so good. but that's um, it does it does it does touch on a point of how they, you know, we enjoy the game because of the survival. They enjoy the game because they trying to break it. Everyone has their goals, I suppose, for a game. As a, a game developer, you never you never know what people are gonna uh, do with it. I suppose. Um, uh, so the new map's coming out. Is there anything you're most looking forward to? Oh, man. <clears throat> Honestly, all of it. I am stoked beyond comprehension. Like, uh, so I started off on Chinaris, and then I eventually made my way over to Livonia and purchased it and whatnot. And, you know, it was great coming to Livonia after Chinaris. And uh, they're still pretty similar in a lot of ways, but a lot of ways they're different. But Sakal is going to be game changing it's going to be so different you know us console players have been let's be honest hurting for a snow map like a real next level oh, hardcore so map cool. for so long yeah yeah great and uh so yeah i'm looking forward to all of it <laughs> 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 uh, you know the way it's going to be like the volcanic stuff mixed with the cold and mm. then um what do you call them the the, the thermo geographical whatever they say little areas where you can go and get a heat buff but you can't stay there too long or you'll get metal poisoning you know yep. the new clothes yeah. i mean the, sitting the in boats. the water with your gas mask on making sure you don't get sick yeah, right. <laughs> that's it just in your in your in your little and there's three eyed fish bobbing around you and stuff. <laughs> That's it. Your tiny whities and a uh, gas sure. mask and Blinky for swimming around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to all of it, man. It's gonna be really great. I'm so happy that Daisy has you know really listened because that's something that so few game developers do these days. They really listen to the people. And they're giving us something that we've been wanting for a long time, both for PC and for console. You know, PC has modded community servers and all that where they get to do the mosque and do their aisles. So regardless, though, they're still getting a new official map. So I bet they're looking forward to it, too. Yeah, 100%. And especially, yeah. you know, from the initial announcements to the later announcements now where they came out and they said, hey, we're bringing a new map. It's only going to be 83 um, 
square kilometers of land and everyone blew up it's smaller than the mouse and now they've recently come out and said well no the map size itself will actually be big as big as Chinara. so uh, I think the popular opinion has changed quite a lot as they release more details yeah I would definitely agree um and then there's also going to be like the ice sheets and whatnot, you know, that are going to be vast, you know, just open, seemingly endless ice sheets, you know, and it's going to be neat. Yeah, definitely going to be good to see what they um, what they throw in there, what curveballs. There's got to be something. I mean, we all saw the, the scientific <laughs> exactly. case. Did you see that, Biscuit, the scientific oh, yeah. case? Yeah. So yeah, it, yes, it, I did. It may mean that it's a, a mission-based map. Which would be yeah, one thing I've definitely. learned. Why put something in that in like that if there wasn't something to achieve with it? You know what I mean? Like you just don't put in a random item like that with just no story behind it. For real. <laughs> yeah. True. Maybe the RP oh, yeah, wanted wanted some luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and they're listening to the community. <laughs> yes, that's totally it. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've noticed about the Daisy developers is they definitely like to, um, you know, give you a lot of details, but definitely not give you all of them. That way, whenever you actually start playing the map, you're going to still find new things that you didn't even know were coming your way. Well, that's right. I think they want the players to figure it out, you know, like mm -hmm. be able to try and, um, you know, work out some little secret things. And that's, uh, I mean, let's let's admit how much we love to do things for science. Yep. You know, it's, it's, marks for science. So. It's, it's part of the day, Z. Yep. <sighs> yeah. And there's a thrill of that, like being a player, working something out. So, yeah, I like it. I like that they don't tell us everything. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, 100%. It is um it is a, a definitely good way that you can't disappoint your community but also get them excited at the same time. I mean, you look at every you look at every experimental, you look at every update, the major content creators, you know, fresh spawns, always streams. They're always jumping on the, you know, the top five things that are coming to the new map or the top five things that are coming, you know, that, that you can do in DayZ now. So uh, I think the, de the devs have caught on that if they leave a little mystery to um, the actual updates that people will go in there and bring it to light themselves, probably better than they can themselves, you know. We all see their, sure. their posts right. with just... Change this, or when are you going to fix the cars, or, um, you know, that sort of stuff. Just complaints, no good feedback. Uh, mm. Is the map only big because of the ice and water? Yes, but I think they're going to play a large uh, role, especially mm. with obtaining something. I would say you have to go island, venture into the island, get into boats, venture out into boats to go and obtain something, and then come back into the island to, I suppose, open up a bunker or something like that. Maybe even venture into the volcano. Yeah. Well, it, it, it makes sense yes. because if you look at it, you know, in Cenaris, one of your main goals to get decent gear is get yourself full ghillie, uh, full ghillie, full NBC and venture to the gas stations to get your decent guns. Livonia is about finding that punch card to get to the bunker. So it makes sense that it's a car, there's going to be something similar. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, sure. and, and as Josie says, being out and all white, um, especially since we've played like servers like Gas and Dark, where the environment turns very plain, you're going to get lost out there. Like if you go out without a, a compass, you're going to spend many, many hours just fighting with your friends saying... No, it's this way. No, it's that way. Yeah, just yeah. over this hill. <laughs> That's it. There's another hill. Another white hill. <laughs> A white hill. Another, yeah. another set of <laughs> ice sheets to come. So, no, you definitely make some definitely some good points um, when it comes to 
what we have to look forward to the map. Um, now, a little bit back onto the streaming. If you could go back to day one of your streaming, what advice would you give yourself? Um, I guess I would say more than anything, just focusing on it being more people oriented, as in doing whatever I can to get my name out there more, whether it's using social media platforms or putting more money. Like, you know, I work a full time job and, you know, I do have a kid and whatnot, but I do also at the same time feel like I could have put more money into my streaming, as in maybe getting you know, a laptop or something with getting OBS software going and all that kind of jazz. But mainly, I think just, as I said, being more people-oriented. And I've done my best to do that, but, uh, you know, it's kind of hard whenever you're a small-time streamer and, you know, you average maybe three, four, five, you know, viewers throughout your stream. But I'm still at such a, a small phase now, I think. It's kind of hard to speak on that. But, yeah, if I had to say, I think that's that's what I would give. No, definitely solid advice. Do you, um, yeah, do, do you now, though, like, uh, push on, like, uh, social media like TikTok and YouTube or? <clears throat> so I haven't yet. I'm still planning to. Uh, one of my new goals that I came up with, with within the past month, actually, is to try to get up to 1,000 viewers or, excuse me, 1,000 followers on TikTok. That way I can go live on TikTok and just kind of prop my phone up while at the same time I'm on live on Twitch. And also... Kick can be used pretty good to uh, get your name out there and, you know, even stream. But I don't know if you guys know, but at least here in the U.S., uh, Kick these days is for <laughs> a lot of weirdos. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard yeah, to do that strange one. World. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've poked in there and then and then I, I backed out. I walked backwards. Right. And went, Ooh, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little raw. It's quite yeah, raw. You get what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, that's good. So you do have a, a TikTok and YouTube? I do not have a YouTube yet. A lot of people have been telling me I should create a YouTube and start editing and just posting, you know, like full videos on YouTube. But um, I'm a very time-consumed man. Um, and with the time that I do have, I try to make the most of it by yeah, streaming on Twitch because it's the most accessible thing to do. Like with having a, a toddler and, like you know, working a, a full-time job and, you know, not really having any family or much of a support system. A lot of the time you have to just kind of, you know, go with the wind and stream whenever you can. And every time I get a chance to stream, Greedy, I'm sure you've seen my streams. I try to stream for 7, 8, 12 hours if I can, you know, especially on weekends and uh, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'd oh, say nice. next is, yeah, I'd say next is trying to get to a thousand followers on TikTok, which I just made a new TikTok account, kind of, you know, gonna base it around uh, my streaming platform. So that might take some time, but definitely YouTube would be a great step for me for here, and I need to get on that ASAP, I would think. Yeah, it's well, a little tip there um, with YouTube that's popular, the YouTube short. So what you can do is when you make your TikTok, you just upload it straight yeah. over onto YouTube. So you don't have to, you know what I mean? You just put your one minute TikTok straight over onto YouTube with, and it's easy. You'll do it in like 30 seconds. So you put basically putting the same content on both platforms, which is, um, which is pretty cool. For sure. But I, I would yeah. say this. What's that? Sorry? Is it just my tip for the day? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I, I would say this, uh, I think anybody who streams DayZ on console, even other games, um, one of the biggest hurdles, leaps to jump over is not being, the, your streamers not being able to hear the voice chat interactions in the game. So that definitely complicates things, and I, for quite some time uh, I've been trying to find yeah. a way around that. Yeah. Oh, well, there is, but it's, it's expensive. Um, you have to play it through. <laughs> well, yeah, but no. Yes and no. Yes. I mean, you do have the option to play through cloud gaming. Uh, so, it, but depending on your internet and sometimes just, you know, cloud gaming itself can be a little laggy, but yes, you can do it. You just need to uninstall. Oh, can I just take. 30 seconds to, if anyone else is interested, uh, basically you uninstall DayZ on your console and then go back to your library and then when you go and then search up DayZ and you'll see the like the little cloud symbol and click on that and play via the cloud 
um, it's a loophole. And then when you play through the cloud, you can actually record game chat like we used to. Wow. I yeah. had no clue. That That's that's very good to know. And I have uh, pretty decent internet. It's 500 megabytes per second, and I'm hardwired too. So might not might not be a terrible idea for me to try that out. Yeah, give it a go. It won't pick up your voice, but if your your stream will pick up your voice anyway. Um, but um, yeah, but it'll pick up everyone else's voice in the game. Yeah. Very good to know. Yeah. Apparently, it still yep. Yeah, apparently, it still works. Apparently, it still works. Uh, give that a roll, or go out the other route, which is get a PC, capture card, the whole kit and caboodle, or. Daisy, that is out. my ultimate goal. Yeah. A lot of people fall fall into the buy a PC, go get a capture card, jump into the PC Daisy world, never come back. <laughs> 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 yeah, there is that. <laughs> yeah, That's even it. so I'd still definitely like to stay on console. I, I adore the console Daisy community. Um so that that's definitely a great piece of information. I appreciate that. And you could even get like the um, like a um, the worst PC, and actually um, get something like uh, GeForce, uh, which means that you can just uh, game through like the cloud. So you yeah, don't actually even need a powerful PC. And do it it, it emulates yeah. it. Interesting. Yeah, there's a few little options that people have yeah. worked out back doorways to. To be able to capture that game chat, I think DayZ and game chat need to be one in one. I think it's a major part of DayZ having that that you know randomness game chat that occurs, you know, in the middle of your of your run. Mm. Yeah, my exact point. One hundred percent. Before I throw it over to my. Uh, Panel. Anyone you would like to shout out for supporting your journey? Um, for one, definitely you, Greedy. Um, there's been more than a few times whenever you've raided my stream with. I think one time it was like, what, like, three hundred viewers, and I was playing <laughs> Firefight on Halo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that, yeah, that was great, man. I, I got a lot of followers from that, and uh, you raided me a few more times. So definitely you, and then um. Uh, let's see, who else? I've got a couple of uh, people who have been to my stream for pretty much since the beginning. But um, honestly, man, I mean, if you want to mean just as far as helping to build the channel, you're probably the guy, brother. <laughs> oh, but it's also Aww. people outside the world. It's also, you know, who you inspire off. Um, no, but I appreciate you. It, it, you know, we've we've uh, known each other for quite a while. We've seen the journey unfold. So, yes. Um, I hate getting raps. It's nothing worse than a compliment. Um, yeah, he's gone all weird. Yeah. Like, he's like, <laughs> he's, 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 like oh, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> his cheeks are blushing. Yeah, that's why yeah, I have it, the, that, that means he's a... Huh? That's that's why I don't have the camera on. You made him go soft. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a rough nut peasant. I'm here to dominate. <laughs> He's um, a humble man. That's Keep it. it I'm a humble man. <laughs> I don't mind helping the little guy. I've I've been the little guy before. I've I've st I started way way long ago, and I mean we've been on the ups and downs of streaming world. So there's nothing better than helping the little guy. Uh, but I will now throw it over to a couple of questions from my panel. You guys, far away to our guests. Oh yeah, I have a question. Do you want to go first, Q? Or... No, no, you go first. All right. So, um, just listening, like to you speak, you have you speak very well. Like seriously, you could be like on radio you have a great streamer voice um fantastic very well spoken very i don't know you know, with some people they sound like when they talk they have a like um a smile in their voice and you sound yeah you sound amazing so it had me curious um if you you don't have to answer the question but if you don't mind me asking like sort of um mention you work full time what type of uh, like career do you have and do you think yeah, that for sure? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm completely open book. Never feel, you know, you guys can ask me literally anything. You, my stream knows that. Uh, anything, I'm a completely open book. But uh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh. Uh, so what I do now full time is I'm a cabinet delivery guy. So uh, I drive a 26 foot box truck and I mm -hmm. deliver cabinets to new construction job sites. So not exactly something that would help out with that, but I can see why you would ask that. I'd say if anything, um, what's that? Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, continue. Sorry. Yep. No, I'd just say if anything, um, coming from the deep south, uh, it's not necessarily because, don't get me wrong, people by no means are uneducated in the deep south in America, but uh, people tend to talk different, very country, very a lot, a lot of slang, stuff like that. But um, growing up, mm -hmm. I always made it an important thing for myself to try to educate myself further in any way that I could as somebody who never had any kind of parents or anything like that to help them get through any kind of college or anything like that so I always just tried to self-improve in any way that I could but that, that's definitely very flattering that you think that <laughs> uh, yeah no don't you don't you guys agree don't you think he's he speaks so well like it's just yeah it's it's lovely to hear um and I yeah I definitely um hope that you continue with like with twitch and and continue with just any form of like putting content out there and, and using your voice because yeah, yeah you've definitely got it you've definitely got that thing so yeah stick with it for sure it's it definitely great to hear it's very inspiring you don't have as much slang as some of us like the peasant or speak shit like the peasant <laughs> <laughs> well I mean let's face it when you live in the southern part of the world you, you tend to be quite rough raw and rugged you know <laughs> that's it all right <laughs> yeah, I agree. Of... <laughs> Our little thug over here. That's it. <laughs> I definitely say before I moved from uh, Louisiana to North Carolina, because coming here, being here for the past four years, uh, I've my like if you guys would have met me when I first moved, I would sound like a country bumpkin, you know, just your classic redneck, you know, but. It, so like your personality, you know, of course, it's affected by the kinds of people you're around. And being here for the past mm -hmm. four, almost five years, it's, you know, just kind of changed me a little bit. And I'd say mostly better ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know you prior, prior but definitely, uh, yeah, you you speak amazing. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, have my support. I. Yeah, I well actually I realized I already follow you. <laughs> I probably I've probably yeah, been lurking in your streams, but I've never actually spoken to you directly. So no, this yeah, is I've seen you in the streams several times. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I just spy on people. That's it. Yeah, no, I mean lurk. Daisy lurk. stalker. Sorry, I Daisy stalker. <laughs> Daisy stalker. Daisy <laughs> stalker. I am. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Uh, uh, thanks for answering the question. Appreciate that, and thanks for being open and honest. That's lovely. Yeah, for sure. I love to be open and honest. I think it's very important for people to be that way. Facts. Indeed. Indeed. I'll take it away well, to Q. I think I'll, I'll, I'll move my, my questions from not so personal level, but it's more of a back to the DayZ style. One thing that I quite like and enjoy to know about um, whereabouts in DayZ do you call home? What's, what, what's your favorite town, your favorite place to roam to? Man. All right, so uh, that's a complicated one for me because I'm a bit of a nomad. <laughs> I'm definitely a bit of a nomad. Uh, I've never actually built a base, and I've never even dabbled in base building. In fact, I've only <gasps> participated in two raids. Right, right. So uh, as far as where I would consider home, I would say if we're talking Livonia in general, just the south. The deep woods, I like to roam from place to place, convoy to convoy spawn, southern town to southern town, military bases. If we're talking Chinaris, you know, just vice versa, the north. Oh, right. Inlander. Wow, oh, come. Inland, I can't believe yes. you've never got involved in base building or anything. So oh, you know what? Say you, you say that. Yeah, I just sort of want to, I, you know what, it makes me want to say, let's bring back fucking Tolga on official and bring in his first heart rate. <laughs> you just want everybody to feel like you do. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Don't ever do it. Uh, don't ever do it. It's stay, a horrible feeling. <laughs> stay a nomad. Stay a nomad. Yeah, stay a nomad. Yeah. yeah. I plan on... I, I plan on doing it a bit in the future, you know, I'd like to uh, at least give it a try, you know, but that's just where I started, it's kind of where I'd stayed, you know, I'm just a bit of a nomad. Yeah. I'll well, tell you what, sure you have a, official... a good support work network around you at <laughs> yeah. the time. <laughs> All right, yeah, Mo yeah, mostly official, yeah. Yeah, well, unofficial, and it's actually very difficult to, to build, but like, it's easy to build a base, it's hard to keep a base unofficial. Oh, yeah. Mm. Definitely. So unless you're... Unless you're rolling with a giant clan that there's always somebody on 24-7, it's... Most bases and official don't last very long. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that and, you know, dupers definitely complicate that, too. Because they they, yeah. they, they... they purposely seek out bases and they'll just blow them away, you know? Yep. That's right. They'll roll through, dig out all your posts, everything. Leave you absolutely nothing but heartbreak and tears. Hey, Smiley. Yeah. There's yep. lit yes, it's literal heartbreak and tears. He's not that's not medic like you will in real life cry and go sit in a corner for a while and A little bit of rocking. Changes you. <laughs> but uh, it I, changes I, you. <laughs> I, I, I think I think the way it is is the joy and the adrenaline rush you have by kicking in somebody's door and raiding their base, if you could turn that to the opposite, that's what the base owner feels. Just, right. you know, being decimated, they feel dirty, <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to go near the game, <laughs> they're, you know, with a bar of soap in the shower, burn their clothes in a bin, that sort of style. <laughs> <laughs> Never go back to Tolga again. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I know it's many God. people on, on community servers that have been raided from the, at their base raided, and then that's it they've never gone back to that server again they'll change servers that's actually broken them that much yeah it's amazing how how attached you can become to it because for a lot of base builders it, it becomes their actual home you know they, they go back there every single day before they log off you know, they, when they log on they're sitting in their home and they have all your doors kicked in and all your shit stolen you can understand why yeah, I'd say yeah. of how time-consuming of a game Daisy is, you it's definitely very easy to get attached to places and things and even the people you meet, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. 100%. Definitely. All right, well, Mr. Biscuit, that's the end of our little one-on-one. -on -one. I hope you stay around for the discussion. Um, excellent questions well, certainly. there for our, our panel. Um, if there's any in chat, like to ask questions far away we'll let them roll um but while we do that we'll let the co-host got any business co-hosts i know bruv's got uh, some well, straight off the bat what about mr straight q? Up, but q would you like to go first this time you want to go first yeah go first? I'll, I'll, I'll go first because yours, yours is right. always more long-winded than my little short <laughs> journey well i'm <laughs> noticing not true <laughs> <laughs> I have been noticing lately, I play, I play a lot of death matches. I always have, for some reason. I'm still terrible at shooting a gun, but I do love me a death match rumble. Yeah, I've noticed in the past month, death matches have fallen off. Especially a lot of the big branded ones that used to have multiple, multiple servers have dropped down to one or no death match servers. Why do we think that could be? Money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, to maybe drop, um, I suppose, my opinion on this, uh, I think the age of deathmatch has disappeared um, and is slowly disappearing mm. due to... Uh, deathmatches came about for people to grab loot quick, shoot, and move on, and that constant cycle. Um I think now with the loadouts being involved, it's now easier for um, people to get on a bigger map server and uh, fight. You know, once again, 10x, you've got um, Battle Quest out there, you've got Conquest, uh, Exclamation Plus Plus. Um, I think they've taken over the side of the Deathmatch server um, for the fact that loot's a lot easier and um better to be obtained yeah 
Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that small format. Yeah. I don't know about your server, bro, but I've got two groups that run my server. One's at one, two o'clock in the morning, and one of them is around one o'clock uh, lunchtime every day. So seven during uh, at the one o'clock during the day, and then four at three o'clock in the morning for me. Now these are people that stay on for about half an hour to forty-five minutes, shoot the shit out of each other. But what you see is two will start, and then a third will start, and then a fourth will start, and then they leave. So I think it's more of the fact that they're yeah. using death matches as meeting points, and then venturing into the server or venturing into uh, their adventure. Yeah, or even if it's a, a yeah, if a server, if there's like their main server is a server reset, then they're like, hey, let's just go double over here for a while, or you know, um, like you said, a, a meet up as well. I'm just going to kick off over here as a little warm up, um, you know, before we start on our adventure. But you're right that that like you know, 10x and exclamation plus plus those styles of servers. I was actually thinking about that last night when we were running on. Um, uh, 10x it was like oh like this feels just so good it's just got that constant flow like just that constant it's like playing daisy but sped up you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and and i really think that like that the, that sort of concept is it's definitely what like pe what people are like liking and wanting um yeah super fun super fun but whereas more sort of very close quarters and um, whether you're, you're spawning in like, you know, already with gear, um, you know, custom loadout or whether you have to find gear, it's sort of in the close quarters, it's pretty, pretty fast pace, whether people get over that pretty quickly mm. um, because there's, you know, it's, it's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, you know, I, I, I like jumping on, on those um, types of ones, you know, when I'm, you know, just pretty drunk and don't want to really want to have to think about it or value my life, you know what I mean? And I'm just more oh, yeah. about chatting with my friends in party and just have something to do while I'm doing that. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? No, you're but, right. Um, yeah, yeah, but, no, but, I, yeah, but I agree what Rob said, yeah. But just to add Everyone to that, to all, I think now. That's that's how we used to roll. If you look at 10x loot, that's my, me and my faction back in the day. Except we just go get our own loot from Jupin God tents. But that's exactly the same way we'd play it. We go, we get grab kit, get everyone together and have a good time. Just roll around. Yep, there's someone there. Boom, 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 boom. You know, five people shooting snipers. Aha, we got him. Yep, tie him up. Have a laugh. Carry on. Meet people. You know, talk to people in chat. So. I think those servers now have that old school official. Maybe it's the long term players that are playing them. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. But definitely. Um, question. Yeah, question. 100%. Has the age of deathmatch <laughs> finally died? Yep. <gasps> well, I mean, the, thing, well, the reason why it made me think of that is because. Whenever I looked at the defense servers, there were, there were like three or four brands that used to stick out to me a lot. Like, like the uh, blackout servers were one. You know, they had like seven, eight servers at one time, and most of them were high to full box. Yeah. And then the same as the last day Z servers, uh, that's it's a shame those have gone because they were a lot of fun to play on with the likes of three fifty seven. Three fifty seven. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> or if, that's it. Yeah. The, the prison island servers where it was just everyone just going hell for high water on prison island death matches you know they just don't exist anymore no there is and, um, I, and I think it's slightly but, changed too like um I've noticed that the PvP I, servers have incorporated like cars and jumps and you know other things to do like you look at come town come town's yeah. a, another good one it's 50 pop consistently but People build little bases, people drive the cars, you know, people gather in mm. the different mm. areas and have, you know, and spark a role play scenario. Oh, Cub Town is so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I haven't got the plan, the chance to play on Comptown, but I've definitely heard that it's pretty good. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta oh, do it. it's, 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 it's a good bunch of fuckery, I tell you all. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Before we jump into Brav, because she's got a little thing. Um, Queen Peasant wants to know um, if you could add a onesie into Daisy Burn Biscuit, what would it be? <laughs> if I could add a onesie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you want to run down the coast as? Oh man. Um, I don't know. I feel like a general good idea. Maybe be like a like a Batman onesie. You know? like a, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, sick. You can, yeah. You can, yeah. You can run up to people, you good. know, and. In game chat, be like, I'm Batman, and then just you know, like, gun him down with a revolver. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'd go the other one. I'd, I'd go the Adam West version and get a little dance and happening as well. <laughs> yeah. I, <know>. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, it. Uh, Hitting people with the big kapow. That's it. That's, right? that's it. That's what I want. <laughs> uh, just rolling through the chat now. Um, all right, bruv, do you want to roll yours? Do you want me to play it first, or do you want to lead in with something? Yeah, just a lead in. A little, little quick intro on the um, and uh, on my TikTok person of the week, uh, Kira Kills. She's actually a bit of a legend in the Daisy TikTok land. If you're a hardcore TikToker uh, and Daisy fan, you would have come across. Kira kills. She's amazing. And uh, yeah, so this is one of her clips. Uh, she has many, many awesome clips. It's just this one. It was like, whoa, what? <laughs> like the timing, the timing of this. Anyway, I'll let you take it away, bro. I'll let you take it away and yeah, see what you guys think of this one. All right. Oh, did it again. I took the sound off. Yeah, it's a pretty um, hectic clip. Yeah, just glides ahead. Little repeat. She plays a lot of exclamation plus plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, yeah, big shout out to, to Kira. Uh, yeah, definitely go over to TikTok land. She's definitely one to follow. Always has some entertaining stuff. Like Rob said, she plays a lot of exclamation plus plus, so she usually has some pretty entertaining content on there. So, yeah, much love and big shout out to Kira. Yeah, Kira kills. Also, I think she gets involved with kills. the soup gaming stuff too, so if you ever want to go punch on, if you think you've got a good hand on the boxing ring, Go out and check that out. You'll be able to see her out there punching on. Uh, my last adventure out to Soup uh, Games and had my little bout with Star Oil Sniper, the host. Uh, I got to meet her and have a little chat in the VIP dugout section. She's a lovely lady. Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. Very nice. So, fancy, uh, Very fancy. Um, He's getting all the backstage passes now. Yep. That's, a, that's <laughs> what it's all about. <laughs> It's all that, those fifties are finally paying off. They're finally paying off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finally. Um, no one wants to know. Do you prefer normal tap water or do you like sparkling water, Mister Biscuit? Normal tap water or sparkling water? Yep. Which one? We talking IRL here? Yeah, uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I'll say, uh, uh, honestly. Uh, I, uh, man, 
I would have to go with tap. I know that sounds absurd, right? But like, no, shit, no, 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 no. that's from the garden hose, right. preferably. I miss the taste. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Come on. I mean, garden. If you're talking tap, garden hose water is definitely the best water, and I, I say tap over sparkling just because. I'm not a big carbonation guy. Like, I don't drink much mm, soda yeah. or anything. Like, I drink three things. I drink energy drinks, I drink beer, and I drink water. If that if that enlightens you a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> nice. Good mix. Good yeah. mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, good mix. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, that. Actually, uh, just as a little side thing, yeah. IRL, uh, the drink of the summer are shandies. They're now canning... Shandies. What? So you can what? go. Uh, no. Four, yeah. No. Four clients have just released one in a can. You to now. You know how we went through the like the cider phase yeah. one summer. We went through like uh, I think last summer was the uh, oh, what's it called like the solo hard solo. Yeah, the hard solo. This summer. Yep. It's shandy. A shandy is lemonade shandy with beer. Oh yep. I used to drink it when I was like it, it, eight at Christmas. <laughs> yep, yeah, that it brings back memories, that does. Yep. Sitting around dad, all his yep. mates, he's like, come on, boy, you can have a shandy with us. <laughs> yeah. Water, yeah. water down beer, yeah. in other words. Older you got, the more beer you got. Yeah. <laughs> it got up when yeah. it started just from like an inch, and then it goes up and up and up. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, right. but they're like, uh, you know, because usually you'd have it because, yeah, well, it'd be like a lighter version of a beer. I must say, if I'm driving, I'll still grab a shandy every now and then behind the bar. A bit of two is new and a, and a top up of lemonade, but uh, they're actually full strength, though. Uh, so you'll get your, like, your 1.2 or, you know, um, like standard drinks or, or uh, I guess in percentage terms, you, you know, yeah, around 5 or 6%. Five. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'll have to yeah, go try it. So, I'll have a crack because there's nothing better than yeah. da Dad's Shandy. Yeah. He used to make him the best. We know yeah. that it's yep. sponsored by Smandy Mastering. <laughs> yeah. Smandy <-O> Important. <laughs> Some like Shandy. beer since 1999. <laughs> uh, and the one on the left set is Taste the Rainbow. <laughs> the, one, the one with the person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what that says. And the can tastes super good. Okay. All right. Well, that's um, – thank you, co-host. Absolutely beautiful discussion there. Uh, and a big shout-out to Kyra Kills, who uh, does some good work. Get out there on TikTok and um, give us some love. Um, we're going to move yeah, on to – <laughs> Our little group discussion now. Um, so, <clears throat> this is something I was have been rolling over since they've announced it, and these are the seasons of Daisy. Um, so, Daisy cut recently released that they're going to split the loot and divide the maps into seasons. Um, I believe Chinaris will be the mid-season of like uh, summer style, spring. Uh, Livonia will be also a semi-warm one. And of course, Chikau will be a winter. Um, and of course, dividing the clothing, like the winter outfits uh, and things like that, um, onto the different maps. Um, so... It comes to a few issues that I found, well, I think it, um, will come up when it comes to, especially the official side of it, um, porting goods from one map to the other. Um, we've touched a little bit onto it, um, but the seasons are going to really affect this. Um, being able to get fully kitted on Chinaris and then skip across to... Chacal and being able to dominate the spawn is probably going to happen quite often. Um, people will be fully equipped, um, not as much clothing-wise, but supply-wise to be able to easily start a fire, grab a spark plug, grab a boat, um, you know, uh, get yourself inland as quick as possible to get away from spawn. Um, 
should this be able to occur? Should official be like community and be one player <coughs> per server? Should you be able to swap over? I'll, I'll touch on that one first. What's your thoughts on that? Should I take my Chinaris kit to Shakao? No, no. I think it should be like community is. And I think it should be one player, one map. It makes no sense that you should be able to go to a complete different area with what you've got on. Yeah. Yeah, but if we were saying, let's say hypothetically, Daisy was IRL, I mean, you can do that, can't you? I mean, you can, you know, if you go on an adventure somewhere, you're going to get your stuff and then venture over to another place. You're still prepping. You're still playing the game. You're still prepping and still having to loot and get gear and then, you know, move on to, you know, another place. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go against you there, Q, and I'm going to say I think it should be allowed. Ooh. Why not? You're still playing the game. Mm. All right, yeah. Biscuit, you've got to decide it now. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, who's right? <laughs> team Q or K Team Smiley. That's yeah. it. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me think here. So um, I, th I think I'm kind of on the fence of both of you. Um, I think that for game sake, uh, <laughs> I think it would be very interesting if you were, if you had different characters from each place, you know, kind of like uh, how it is on Community. And I say that because, I mean, as as Grady was mentioning, you know, um, it's it adds a whole new dynamic whenever you're coming over with all these different types of gear and different colors of gear and uh, spark plugs, whatever, right? Anything you can use to get an advantage from the jump. But at the same time, I mean, Smiley makes a great point. If we're looking at this from a realistic point of view, which Daisy prides itself on, um, you would certainly be able to travel from place to place. Now I'll add in my own personal little insight here. I think it would be quite interesting if they were to add some type of, uh, say, like a limbo. And I don't even know quite what I mean when I say that myself, but uh, if they were to add in some type of dynamic whenever you switch maps with the same character, right, and say you have to travel this little random space, kind of this uh, limbo, purgatory, something Ooh, like that, right? Well, maybe to get you have to <clears throat> be in a boat and travel in a boat for an extended long period of time before it'll actually right. let you get across to right. the next map. And that would be very so there interesting. Was, there What's was that? this server on PC a little while ago that had that sort of thing where you'd go up to like this vending machine and you're in Chinaris and then you'd switch over and it would teleport you straight to a Livonia server. So there was different mm. things to do in Livonia, but you could only get the gear from Chinaris for that. So I could understand how that would work. Mm. Yeah, I think it'd be quite difficult for, uh, like, mainstream Daisy, you know, like, with official and everything, to add something like that in, such a new concept, but uh, definitely something to think about there. No, it's definitely, um, definitely quality food for thought. Um, there's a few points being touched there. <laughs> um the actual porting across from another map, um, you know, with Yeah, Q what do you with... think, bruv? What's your, your, what's your take? What would you, what, are you for or against? Well, so, your opinion actually gives a better light and a better flow to the DayZ um, world, I suppose. Q's right with safeguarding your actual survivor adventure especially in the snow you know starting from the basics and working your way up um but if they could incorporate a a in-game item and have a travel method so say say you're in chinaris and you find the livonia tourist map you could then take that in a car and head to the outside of the map where you know we have all these points and that would then allow you to then drive technically to Livonia. 
or the same way with Shikau, you get a compass, you get a boat, you get to a certain point at the edge of the map and then it will take you to the water side of Shikau. I think that could be, you know, really help to incorporate the map so you have to find an item in the map to be able to travel rather than just make it to a point and then you can move. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I think that's a way they could in- make the the realism. You know, you had to have a full tank of gas. Mm. You had to have the map. You know, you had to have at least, you know, uh, your food and water had to be full. And then when you arrive at Livonia, you are in similar stats as if you <coughs> fresh spawned in. You know, your food was halfway Definitely. down. Definitely. Your water's all the way down. You know, you're starving. Um, yeah, that's probably the way I would like to see it, I suppose, incorporated rather than just log out and switch. You know, yeah, I like same. that idea because it gives the whole mission-based style to it, similar to how they try to push things lately. So I, I kind of like that idea as well. It's, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You could, and you could use... And especially... No, go no, I was just going to touch on what you said, bruv, especially like with, um, you know, if we take that boat idea, I mean, you might have to be sitting in that boat cause, and you have to, yeah, make sure you've, like you said, get a, a, enough fuel and supplies to actually be able to make it, you know. Um, otherwise, if you don't, then you arrive at your destination, but you're fresh because you just, you know, you didn't didn't make it with all your goodies yeah that um, that's a good yeah, idea yeah. too you know there's if you don't have all the goods and you want to risk you know maybe maybe there's a you need full food full water a full tank of gas and the map but you only got full food full water and the map you could still allow it but there's a risk that the car will break down and you end up arriving in Livonia fresh because you've had all your gear taken off you or you know the the boat itself has had a, a storm effect and you've rocked up on the boat on the, mm. a chacal once again in the boat the boat's wrecked and you have to start again um or even if there's um only one route that you can take to to get there which essentially would be the way because it's like there, there's only one way to get there that you're also competing with other players in boats as well like that can you know well this a pirate. This is where I think Biscuit was going with his limbo mode. This is where I thought he was going, um, where you would have uh, a very small map. Maybe it's just a a highway to Livonia and people could Mm. pull up and and, and actually have ambushes in that limbo stage. And same with the waterway. Yes, kind of a sequence. Yeah, like a sequence map. Yeah, people would camp the route, but, but that would be the key. You know, if if mm. if if Chinaris was the main spot that you had to go, and you ventured into Livonia, you would then have to come back to Chinaris to get a boat to then go to Chicago. Yeah, oh, I, I definitely I think that. that um... I would have played that now. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> but it does. It takes. I mean, I think that's honestly quite realistic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. God damn it. Okay. I'll be sweet now. <laughs> I agree with you, Swan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it works when these things are employed. Like, if they, say they had, you know, 10 li- limbo servers that you would randomly jump into, you may cop somebody camping one. You may cop the one that nobody's camping in. You know, there's, there's 10 servers mm-hmm. that run the 10 highways. So you may cop where. Somebody's taken 15 cars, five from uh, Chinaris and 10 from Livonia, and stacked them all into the middle. It would be a very, very interesting way to change and a very interesting way to also incorporate the value of helicopters. Because if they put a helicopter Mm. in, you would no longer have to take on those problems. And a helicopter would be gold. You wouldn't even have to fly it. You just have to get the parts together, get all the shit, jump into it, bang, and then say, listen, what map you want to go to across? Listen, I want to fly it, but nice. one step at a time. Yeah. Or you know what? We could even take it to another level as well. Uh, like, so those limbo areas it could be like, 
And like when you're like, uh, you know, like in movies or in books or something, they go, oh, we've got to get here. But first we have to get through this. Well, like dark forest that's full of like freaking evil stuff. That's just an example. Not saying they have a dark forest on there, but you know what I mean? Like, or maybe you have to go through something that's like has fucking tornadoes or has, you know what I mean? There's yeah, another the, element on the top weathers. of that as well. So, oh, so, so basically, basically did fall. So you know the PC map did fall. Yeah. How it all everything funnels to one little dark, dingy area. Then we've got to get through to get to the other side of the map where the main end goal loot is. Yeah, similar. Similar to like that. Yeah. Except yeah. except you know you can even change it up with the highways being you know you spawn into this in this highway with your car and there's ten thousand infected. That you now have to. Either, I was just gonna say. Yeah, you have to either go back yeah. or. You and your crew have to battle your way through. And that would be yep, a great opportunity to. for something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or there's a, like, you can only go so far in a vehicle, um, and then you have to do the last bit on foot, which means you, you do have to go through some, like, you know, forest, which is riddled with bears and wolves and shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you just have it, that extra. It, well, it costs your car in the next scene, doesn't it? You've just managed to load mm. into that limb, we call the limbo. And it's your scenario is it's just a car wrecks and you can't actually get the car there. So you've got a choice if you want to go back and reload yeah. it and go find another map and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this, this, well, this yeah. we need to uh, send this to Daisy and say, make this because we're not playing your game now without it. <laughs> yeah, because we really want to play this. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that. I really think that the Horde perspective is a great thing to touch on because I, I at least myself know several people for quite some time that have been really wanting to see something like a Horde dynamic introduced. And if there were to be such a thing as like the Limbo servers or whatnot, something you kind of cross through to get through to the next map, uh, like Greedy was saying, man, like you get over there and, you know, it because the problem, right, the reason we can't have Hordes on official servers, community servers, just because of the the... the massive amount that it puts on these servers right it's not really Correct. plausible right now yeah but if it if it were a smaller area kind of like a limbo server then you would actually be able to add in like a horde dynamic you know kill two birds with oh. one stone facts and you could yeah. do it like yeah. those um like those zombie games that are like in the city and you sort of have to uh like like say uh the hordes on the ground and you have to like sort of parkour across roof you know, the roof of yeah. buildings and stuff. Like, that would be, be great, cool, huh? Yeah, multiple yeah. ways yeah. to get through. You could go through without fighting the horde and, and scale the buildings and try and get through that way or, you know, take the brunt approach or... Tunnels. Maybe a game enough to just drive your car, flat chat and pray. <laughs> yeah. Oh, toxic tunnels. You could have tunnels that you have to go through, but you have to get all your, like, uh, gear to actually, gear. like, get through them. Oh! Look at us, brainstorming. <laughs> oh, man, we could just keep going. Maybe but, we should be game developers. Yeah. But it also... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Look, you're looking at the Somebody... PC world, Daisy Dibs. Maybe yeah. just come look at the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody we send Bohemian you, Interactive you. this email. Yeah, that's it. I'll send, I'll <laughs> yeah. send them the podcast it... themselves. I'll send them the podcast. This is what you got to do yeah. to improve your game. No, but... Um... <laughs> It's definitely food for thought, and the game is easily expandable to be able to go that direction too. Uh, whether cost-wise yeah. and server-wise it'll be functional, I'm not sure, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be definitely pretty cool. Um, so, I'm going to find where we were now. We'll lead right off. So... In the actual, yeah, we got really excited, didn't we? Yes. Got right into that. <laughs> so, in the actual files themselves, in the actual game files, you can set the temperature for every month. So every month you can adjust the temperature, and in DayZ, um, the temperature varies depending on the time of year. Um, so it gets colder uh, in the middle of the year, and then uh, sorry, it gets colder over the the Christmas time of the year, and then it gets a bit warmer. Um, as the actual 12 months progress and it's servers actually have a 12 months time um 
So my question is, uh, DayZ already having a 12 month a year temp system in the game files, and with the new seasons coming out, do you think the temperatures are going to be changing on the actual server over the progression of the year, or will these servers now have a set temperature and that's how they'll be? Yeah, I think that's what they're uh, looking to change to, is just set temperures. What, continuous set temperatures or slight variations, do you reckon? So. I think they'll keep them continuously set. Hence the reason why they've came out and they made a big deal about this, uh, this, you know, Livonia is this, Cenaris is this, and Sakaal is this. And why they're changing the, the clothing, the thermal dynamics to suit that in those, in those maps. Yeah. Right. So mm. seasons yeah. have so seasons have always been in days. Each and Aris has had it. You, if you played it more than twelve months on uh, any servers, especially official, you've experienced the the hotter days and the the colder mornings and all that. But now it's it's it to me. It seems like that's all now going to go out the window. There'll be no longer yeah any ability to make maybe not even change the temperature and that's going to be detrimental to the community side of it i don't think they'll take that ability out of the of the code itself so i don't think they'll stop community servers from being able to change the temperature but i think their main official servers start they're going to stick with one temperature and that's it hmm. do you think that's a good or a bad thing I think it's neither nor. Yeah, you know, you've always got community servers if you don't like how official are. Very yeah, true. but if you're on community servers, we can't. Like, will we be take? Would that option be taken off? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I can't to, see them yeah. doing that though. You know, they've they've never really taken away much. You know, they they may change the the files for how they want it, with their idea of the game. But they've never really stopped communities from being able to change what they've created for themselves, if you know what I mean. Very true. Very true. Yeah. I'm just wondering if if it'll be now inbuilt and that option won't be available. I think it'd be a big mistake if they did it like that. Oh, I think so too. Communities would like you got, you know, one life winter below zero, you got a couple of warmer servers. Mm. Um, I mean, this server here, we don't even worry about temperature because it sits at 20 degrees the whole time you do the podcast. But, you know, they, yep. they have turned around and said that we can import the, the, the snow and the stuff like that over to Cenaris and that. So, logically, would tell you they wouldn't mess with the community files to be able to change the weather. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make your winter Cenaris and stuff. Yeah, but is it, is it, wait, hang on, is the snow attached to the weather, though? Like, can you have it snow and it's still hot on a server? Yes. Um. Technically, yes. Well, you can have it raining and it's hot. They're two different coding sides of it. you got the weather file and then you got in gameplay... That's where the temperatures are. So you could technically have 40 degree snow. <laughs> 40 degree snow. Yeah. <laughs> what would be the effects of that? Would it actually <laughs> melt? Or would it just... <laughs> All right. Well, what would happen in, in the temperature wise? So in the new map, you light a fire and the snow melts. So if you had a 40 degree server, mm. would you actually have no, sur no snow on the ground? Yeah, would it fall? And then as soon as it hit the ground, it would just be a watery mess. I don't know. Yeah, just wondering if we can, yeah, continue to separate those two. That's what I mean. Is temperature going to be incorporated in, in weather due to the fact of, you know, the blizzards and stuff and, and those things coming in, which yeah. will remove our ability to change weathers, which means you won't have... Mm. You won't have um, cold service. Uh, it's not hot rain, Noah. It's acid rain. 
Yeah, acid rain is for too much pollution. <laughs> if you, if you were going to put anything in. Um, well, we already discussed my last question, which was now that boats and cars are in the game, should they be moving the map occur at an exit point? At the ends of the maps or the ocean for the boat? That's where I got the compass from. Yeah, items also required, like a compass, a map, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you like the new system that's coming to DayZ with the seasons and clothing styles? What's your personal opinion on the the way they've changed it? Do you think it should stay the same? Are you happy with how it stays? Or do you think a change is going to improve? What do you mean like mm. the clothing like with the with the new map? Like Well, you won't be able to you won't be able to get the winter outfit on Chinaris, you won't be able to get certain clothing styles on certain maps. Um you know, the seasons. Oh, it'll be limited to that. Yeah. Okay. Oh. No, I think it's fitting. I think it's fitting. Like we we're talking about, As like if you're traveling to a new new place, it's going to have, you know, if I'm if I'm, you know, IRL, going to Thailand, completely different outfit. I'm wearing a completely different outfit over there. Then I'll be, you know sweating continuously i'm wearing tank tops and shorts and booty shorts whereas you know like not so well maybe here yeah, but maybe what's not a good, you know what i mean anyway, yeah but, you know if you go into somewhere if, new if you're gonna go visit it's, Q, it's different... freezing cold yeah <laughs> that's why it's way down on my list of things to do in my life <laughs> yeah but exactly like that's why he has to wear a leather jacket all the time but uh, yeah, no, I think that's that should yeah, I'm 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 all all for that yeah. Uh, uh, what, what were you banging on my leather jacket for just then? <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> <laughs> you need you, it. You don't insult the, the leather live. jacket. Yeah, shit. <laughs> Was it an insult? Just an observation. <laughs> but uh. Um... No. no. Yeah, I think I think for newcomers it's going to be a lot more adventurous. I think if you start Daisy with Shakao being out, you'll all of a sudden, you know, oh I can get this stuff on this map and this stuff on this map. Where I think of the new players be like, uh, oh yeah, here's the winter outfit on Shakao. That's great. Uh, okay, yeah. You, you know, it's I, not I, really gonna understand. What, yeah. We will be new players will grasp a hold of the whole concept better than the older players will be because we're used to having you know you go to any ski resort and you can find winter, summer, spring, or autumn hunters gear. Yeah, mm. so in saying so that, people will just will be like, Hey, she can't hey, can I... notice it. Yeah. Can I put in a point here? Yeah, of course. So we got a guy in here in my stream, Stratascape. He also just joined your stream as well. He says he'll have to get on the podcast at some point since he does dev work on the community. Ooh. Might be able to offer some interesting perspective. Always. We're always looking for guests and stuff like that. We can fire across in the, the Discord, ca uh, capture me or throw me a DM so I know who you are. And then uh, we can roll from that way, but... Um, as, as long as I can get on a Daisy map, uh, an Xbox server. For sure. Yeah, 100%. Oh, my voice has changed. Yeah, as long as you're on Xbox, try to escape. Yep. Um, we're always looking for cat. Um, but yes, um, I, I do think it's going to be a hell of a change for the community, especially when it comes to the seasons. Uh, the one thing I want to know is... Because there's four outfits, the winter, the summer, the spring, and the autumn, does this mean there's a fourth map in the pipeline? Yeah, I was thinking that. Oh, yeah, I'd actually I actually thought of that. A tropical one. I think, like, you know how we were talking about, like, that summer rain, tropical. I'm thinking, Humidity. I don't know, I've got Thailand on the break, so. Because I've gone to Thailand in a couple of months. Ooh. The break I would. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, yeah. hey, greedy, just just look behind you there. Maybe that's some kind of uh, you know, foreshadowing. Yeah. Wow, Ooh, yeah. Bikinis. Yes. Bikinis and sarongs. Well, and maybe then maybe Sarani and, could be a new and place. Then, and then read the the caption. Just a flight away. Does that exactly. mean helicopters? There you go. Who yeah, knows? Seaplanes. <laughs> Seaplanes. Fuck Ooh. me. Fuck, I'd crash that motherfucker into someone's base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else would there you do? This is the problem about if we, if questioning whether we get helicopters or anything like that. They were definitely going to have to fix the base building. Otherwise, you would just fly a helicopter straight into someone's face. You don't need to raid anymore. That's oh, it. kamikaze, for sure. Yeah, kamikaze. But even if you had it to the point you could drop people off on the top of their towers, depending on how good of a, a control you were of a helicopter, I've seen, I've seen smileys fly one, so they're not very very um, easy to control. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pro helicopter person now. That's it. Park, parks them in a tree. Yep. It's like tea bag. Uh, let, there's the there's the keys. It's parked in that tree over there. I think it's for the ride. <laughs> Can you pot it out, pot it out for me? But um, yeah, thanks for the loan. <laughs> definitely, definitely some good points. Good discussion points brought up. So definitely some excellent ideas. I really like that limbo idea, that port through or the the uh, the journey that takes you from one map to the other. I think you nailed that one on the head, Mr. Biscuit. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. It'd be really interesting to see them implement something like that. Yeah, and also the risk. Oh, definitely. You know, getting yeah, the risk would be monumental. Yeah. 100%, 100%, especially if everyone started at Shinoris too, because you'd be like, oh, where are you? Oh, I'm on, you know, I'm in the bunker in Livonia. So you had to go, you know, all the dramas are getting to Livonia, finding a key card, and, you know, that, that really pumps the adventures and uh, really pumps up the, uh, I suppose, achievement style of it. Hey, you got another oh, one of those? imagine the fear you yeah, would have, like we, the, we got the some... gear fear you would have. Oh, yeah, yeah bloody oath. How come you don't? <laughs> how come you don't want to go? To, how come you never venture to Chinaris or uh, to Livonia or Chicago? Because I've got too good a gear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because uh, there would be such an emphasis on on looting and like, oh, yeah, you'd have to get full stack to be really smart about it as well. Yeah. Especially with like now with. Um, you know, uh, you know the size of how much you know. Well, our pockets, I guess that how how much we can fill up. But I, yeah, the gear fear would just go through the roof, through the, through roof. the roof. But you would also have, <laughs> hey, I'm going to Livonia. Do you want to come with me? Because I'm I, I don't think I can get it through myself. You would have that interactions of players. Oh. Yeah, and mules, man. Oh, <laughs> be keeping that mule, buddy. <laughs> get, get get loot oh. mules all the way to Livonia bunker and then get popped. <laughs> yeah, straight oh. straight cats would have a whole new meeting. I'm taking these five with me because so, I'm going to make it <laughs> to the end. <laughs> so yesterday I was playing official before the CC run, and I ran into this dude that was limping around. He's like. Hey man, hey, we do a lot of five minutes. Like, oh, I just planted some pumpkins half an hour ago. Should we go see if they're ready? Hey, should we go to see if they're ready? It's like, yeah, sure, let's go. Poor motherfucker, eh? You know what happened as soon as he pulled out his first pumpkin? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yay, now I got all the pumpkins. <laughs> that's it. I'm the pumpkin man. <laughs> now I'm the pumpkin king. That's it. <laughs> and your fertilizer. <laughs> uh, one more question, actually. Uh, do you think they're going to add new achievements to the new map? I think very much so. Yeah. I mean, this is Xbox. Achievements are a big thing on Xbox, so uh, I think it's pretty likely they will. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Hopefully. Yeah. I do hope so. 
Nothing well, like a we, good achievement. Did, did get, we get? No, nah, not with, with, with Livonia, we didn't. Mm. Well, it'll be Maybe things like defrosting food. Either. You've defrosted your first, you know, like it'll be something, I reckon, yeah. like that for sure, wouldn't it? Get metal. That's a new... Get metal poisoning. Cure metal poisoning. Mm. Sit in the lava. Get burnt alive. <laughs> <laughs> Eat steaming hot food. That's it. Achievement, <laughs> you're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone want to add anything in before we wrap the show up with our TPP game? Oh, um, I... uh, yeah. yeah, open floor. I was going to say uh, earlier... Um... Smiley here added in the thing. You know, you guys were talking about TikTok creators. Uh, I think a great TikTok creator you guys could check out Ooh. is his name is Clay on on TikTok. Give me one second here, and I'll pull up his tag. TikTok's being a little buggy at the moment. One second. Is he a so console they, as well? He's console. Yes, he is console. And uh, we're talking nice. about uh, his tag here is VXK. Clay, so all together, V X K C L A Y. He is uh, very, very popular. Um, surprisingly, I'm surprised you guys haven't heard of him by now. I just stumbled upon him myself recently, oh, yeah. but um, very popular VXK. TikTok creator for Console Daisy. He's the founder of Void Z, which is a Discord. Also, I'm pretty sure uh, you know community server community, and awesome. he's got three point million. Or three point one million likes, uh, twenty two thousand followers, and whatnot. Uh, does a lot of what? a lot of content, man. Yeah, pretty great content. You guys should totally check him out. Drop looking the... him up right That's now. That's the youngest. Hey, so... dropping the ball there, bruv. Dropping the ball. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Be great. Yeah, it should yeah. be right. And he's a console. If he's console, yeah. that's just like. Maybe you guys could get him on yeah. the podcast at some point. Be a great person to talk to. Yep, 100%. We'll send our TikToker out there to stalk, I mean, lurk. You lurk? We like to use the term lurk. It's lurk. more gentle. That's it. <laughs> uh, actually, the Queen would like to know, Halloween is coming up. Do you think they'll add new gear? If they don't add my skeleton tracksuit, I'll be filthy. Uh, <laughs> well, well, or a wedding dress. You know what? Uh, I was yeah, watching an advertisement. I was watching an advertisement for DayZ the other day, and they were running around playing fucking Jason. Yeah. So they had someone with a hockey mask stalking people out and shit. Is that a little bit uh-huh. of shadowing for what's coming? Well, they actually did Friday the 13th on Friday. They actually had a post on Twitter to That's say, hey, it's Friday the That's 13th. Yep. Uh, Jason mask, blah, blah, blah. Let, let's see you murder people on Friday the 13th. But incorporation of an actual you know let's not do the hockey mask let's do the the actual proper hockey mask the full faced one with the little slits in the eyes yeah i'd like to see that yeah mm. yeah 100 percent. what about you biscuit what's oh they can even put in a yeah you, you're the, uh, yeah you're the, the american let's say they... let's see what you've got <laughs> <laughs> the american. oh man <laughs> too much too much pressure fuck <laughs> I think uh, they could definitely add in uh, a, a scream mask, even a scream suit. So uh, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced oh, this. Oh yeah. But, uh, back when I was, yeah, back when I was growing up, they had this really unique. It was pretty cool. It's the uh, average thing you could get at your little Halloween store or whatever. So it was a scream mask, and then it was like the scream suit, where it was like you know, kind of like a black robe, and it had this little pump you could press on it to where it would make like fake blood flow throughout the suit through the tubes and i think it'd be pretty neat if they added in something like that you know kind of like a little scream mask with a black wardrobe kind of thing you know nice be interesting yeah very nice very nice hello sydney there we go (laughs) (laughs) do you want to play a game What's your favorite horror movie? That's it. Oh, uh, the better one. What's up? Imagine how many people be <laughs> running yeah, around doing up? that. <laughs> turn into oh, What's man, Up man. Fest. Uh, All right. No, good suggestions there. Yeah, good suggestions. All right. Well, um, 
Everyone's done and dusted. We'll finish off our podcast in style. We're going to play the TPP end game. If you need a drink, Ooh. need some food, I've got some beers, I've got some vodkas, I've got candy canes downstairs. Hey, well, I'll, take, I'll take a drink, why not? Catch I'm going to win today, Ooh. Smiley. I'm going to win. Ah! Yeah, we'll There's see, no we'll Brandon see. to know what the fuck will be this time. <laughs> All right, so our rules of the game uh, are quite simple. Make it to the end and kill your opponents. After you throw up from going All right, round. I'll try my best. And round and round and round and round. <laughs> And spew. Uh, at the end. <laughs> now we're feeling better. Yeah. That's the way. Oh, no punching though. No punchy punchies. Yeah, no so hands, no fisties. this is our little <clears throat> obstacle course. So grab yourself a candy cane and some beers if you need to. They're just here. Mine's a shandy. Mine's a shandy. <laughs> I should get some lemonades out there. <laughs> All right, so this is our starting gate. Like one now. Inside that apartment, you will find shotguns with rubber bullets. If you follow me this way, Mr. Biscuit, we'll give you a little preview of the map so you know what you're going through. So when you get your shotguns oh and your I rubber bullets, you, got this. you can shoot your opponents as... Many times as you like. So first of all, you go through the apartment, then into the caged area. Make your way through this little barrage of walkways and stepping stones onto the castle. From the castle, you can either take the high wire or the low wire. Then you make it back down to the piers. And then once you get down to the piers down the bottom here, you make your way all the way up the other side and we lead back to the start where you'll find live ammunition for your shotgun to be able to kill your opponents. All right, so the yep. right back by me one time. What's the, uh, the goal here? To get to this point up here, I'll show you and obtain the live ammunition to kill the others. We usually end the show with a bloodbath. Okay. So the only live ammunition is on that little table over there. All right, I see. So you start down here through the apartments. In the apartments, you'll find the shotguns in the rooms with the bullets. You go up to the top of the apartment and then you follow it down and around to here. All right, where's everybody else gonna be? Uh, I'm going to be watching. These two will be your opponents. This is the starting line here. So they'll be racing with it with you exactly the same time. So don't be afraid to shoot them and <laughs> knock them out because they won't be afraid to shoot you and knock you out. All right, but no hitting. No, no physical no punching. Hitting, no. No. Q, right. if you're talking, we can't hear you. Yeah, we've lost That's Q. Insane. Haven't heard you for a while. Yeah, no baseball bats from no. Q. <laughs> yeah, no, put it away. That's it. Ease it up. Ease up. Right. So grab if, a shoddy, grab some rubbers. If you get a little too beaten up, yell out, I've got um, Cupid's arrows just to help the the game flow. Uh, only because it's love. Yeah. Oh, wow, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the TPP Endgame. This is your chance to grab the live ammunition and annihilate everybody on the server. Take your marks. Set. Go! All right. So Brov's, ta Brov's taking the shortcut. She goes the shortcut always. Yeah. Who's going to be first out of the top now? Or will the shotgun start chiming? So they got tables with two or three shotguns on it, plenty of ammunition. 
but taking too long may cost you the race. First off the bat. Q not talking Q. is making me feel very uncomfortable. Yes, Mr. Q. <laughs> Oh, he nearly copped the shotgun. Ooh. Close. Biscuits out about. <laughs> nearly up his butt. Zip by the way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's a little biff happening there. Oh. Bro. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Ah. Oh, that's it. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Go on, I'll let you have a little head start. No, no, no. Oh, time. God. <laughs> Q's doing the smart <laughs> thing. Uh, <come> on. <laughs> We're going to at least let him get to the... the <laughs> Can't go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh god. Don't don't take it easy on me, it's okay. Shoot That's me. That's it. Oh, okay. I will. Ah ha ha! Ah ha ha! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we whoa, even whoa. shoot through these things or not? I don't nah. know. Oh. oh, I suck. I actually suck. No, I don't know how you didn't get him there. <laughs> Alright, stage two's complete. Ah! Uh... <laughs> oh, this is going for a sleep. Come on, I, I yeah, I let him go for a while, but <laughs> <laughs> Q's the only one up. They are both technically out. Q is the only one active at the <laughs> moment. <laughs> he's taking the dangerous route, it's the easy one, but if he falls off, he's dead. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, that's why we put the easy route in, bruv. That's why we put the easy route in. I know. It's the wheelchair access. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I going? Oh, no. I'm yeah, going. you were going the right way. Yep, there's two ways. Oh, Mr. Q's in the lead. <laughs> Try. They go on the accessibility ways. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Q's miles out in front, miles out. Maybe he's got a shotgun to win. He's gonna need it. Looks like Mr. Q's in the... What do we do with the zombies? ...in the crate maze. You just gotta get past them. Just watch out, they're highly <laughs> explosive. Oh, man. The Q's made it, he's got the crate maze done. Oh, he knows that down pack, man, that crate maze. Uh... I don't think you've ever been down there, have you? <laughs> He's doing it the smart way. He's covering all his tracks. 
I'm way below. I fell. Oh, he's out. The guy biscuits out. He fell. Biscuits out. <laughs> Do I get to spectate, Greedy? Yeah, you can come up here and spectate if you want. Alright, sweet. That was, that was pretty interesting for the little time I was in. That's a little mini game that we like to play. I would rather... Yeah, I love it. I would rather honestly watch the first time anyway. Yeah, but then you know. It's better if we just incorporate you than in that sense of being lost. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get him before he gets to the end. I hope he's got a shotgun. If he doesn't have a shotgun, he won't win. He's going to stay a beater. <laughs> uh -oh. Yep. I always find I don't know where the ammo is though. Last time you just you just gave me some. So. <laughs> yeah, well, last time. I no, that's on the table. It's actually the ammo is on the table. I think um, Q's taken it, so you have to beat it out of his dead body or knock him out uh. with his shotgun and um, take it that way and shoot him. Hello, Q. That's, that's the point of having the shotgun. It's like Duck Hunt. <laughs> I feel like there should be some music playing right now. Uh, Biscuit, you can jump across there and beat the shit out of Q if you like. <laughs> and Smiley. I don't want to... I don't want to go against the rules here. <laughs> well, she might take four hours to hit him. She's going to run out of ammo. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I'd probably just go over there and beat him. Can I? Can, I, can shot. I just beat him now? Yeah, you can beat him. I was just giving it. Oh, I didn't know that. We could... I just thought it'd be. I didn't a... know we could use hands. Oh, yeah, all right. I just know uh, hands on the maze part. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> use the shotgun anyway. Oh, in that case. <laughs> ah! Get him, Smiley! Let's go! Oh, we're hitting each other. Sorry. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 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 uh, got a power up. Guard me, guard me. Okay, I've got you covered. Please. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He's cheating, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use all the advantages possible. <laughs> gonna take you down. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Come on. It's nearly down. I see him. He's low struggling. On He's struggling. Low on stem. We got him. Just a few. Ooh, come on. Come on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Now what? Now what, now what happens? Good. I think he's dead. Oh, now we, now we kill each other. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Oh, no. <laughs> they take the ammunition. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They take his ammunition and shoot each other. What about this? About this. Yeah, I forgot about that. I don't, Thanks, I, don't, bro. I don't have a gun. I threw all my guns. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I got a knife oh. and a gunfight. I got a knife and a gunfight. Let's do it. Come on, right now. All right. Come on. Okay. If you don't miss, if you don't hit the first one. <laughs> come on, take out our guest. Uh, come on. There we go. <laughs> all right. It's official. Rob's the winner. No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. oh, oh, the comeback, the reload. Should I do it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Still alive. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. Isn't that right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Q? I'm sorry, Smiley, I'm sorry. 
Oh, who's this? Who is this? <laughs> that, that'd be cute. Take him out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That's our podcast done and dust. A big shout out to Mr. Burnt Biscuit. You can check him out on Twitch and soon to be YouTube, TikTok and all the social medias for coming out and having a chat and sharing with us a little about himself and his adventure on Day Z. Uh, a big shout out to our chat and of course our panel for coming out with some absolutely legendary stuff. We're going to be here shooting a lot of people for the next five or ten minutes if you want to come and pop in.